Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Viafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. All right, let's jump into phosphates and nitrates. Right, right. One of the one of the biggest topics of past years. Um, you know, whoever heard of phosphates five years ago, all of a sudden they're they're there and they're important. <laughs> and oh my God, why don't I have to get rid of them and all? Um, phosphates and nitrates. Um, I'm just going to kind of refer to phosphates because basically, the when you talk about phosphates, you're also talking about nitrates. Um, first of all, where where do we get phosphates from? Um, uh, phosphates are, are naturally occurring products, as far as the whole you know rain cycle is concerned. You know, it rains, it gets into the ground, and the ground's fertilized. Uh, that's where they get the phosphates in the water, and then it's pumped out into well and all this other stuff. So. So basically, if, if you are dealing with a customer who um, is, is on a farm, um, uh, in particularly dairy farms, um, has a lot of crop dusting going on, lives near a golf course, okay, or does a lot of fertilizing and landscaping around a pool, okay, the likelihood of there being phosphates in the water is high because um, maybe not so much, well, when, when it rains here, yeah, but phosphates get into pool water by runoff. It rains, it goes over the you know, the fertilizer that's in the ground, um, and then gets into the water. Sprinklers. Sprinklers, that kind of thing, yeah. And and you don't really know that you have a problem unless it, it happens. And what the, it that happens is that you have a beautiful pool go green overnight. And that's the, that's the classic, uh, um, oh, my God, I got phosphates in the water. So you've got phosphates in the water. So what? You can have phosphates in the water and still have a beautiful pool. That means you have a very, very low level. And what's a very, very low level? Phosphates are measured in parts per billion as opposed to parts per million. And usually the, the industry says anything under 125 parts per billion, don't worry about it. Don't hassle with it. If it's over that amount, then you might want to take care of it. And we'll talk about taking care of it in a moment. But what phosphates will do is that, and the best way to describe it to give you a visual on it, is that phosphates eat chlorine. That's that's, and I know that's probably really really basic, but but that's what it does. It 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 consumes it. It takes over chlorine so that chlorine can't sanitize and oxidize, and therefore algae can grow. So that's why I said earlier, you know, you can have phosphates in a pool and still have a beautiful pool. That means you don't have any algae, but you also don't have any chlorine in the water. Okay, because the phosphates have taken care of it. But if you have even a little bit of algae growing, I mean. Phosphates are like a biological buffet. Uh, algae is a biological buffet for phosphates. I mean, you just eat them up and multiply, and, and that's then you have a problem. Um, same thing is true with nitrates. Uh, now, for, for testing phosphates and nitrates, it's pretty much both the same test. You're, it's a color matching test. You're using something called stannous chloride to produce a blue color. And then you match the blue color against a chart or some kind of color value standard that gives you a reading. Um, Generally speaking, anything over, if I if I remember correctly, uh, 100 parts per, is it 100 parts or that no, 1,000 parts per billion, is considered a health hazard by the EPA, and you shouldn't drink the water. Um, anything under that, uh, you can drink it, but who would want to? I guess. But anything over 1,000 parts per billion is, is considered a health hazard. So that's number one. Um, number two is when you test for phosphates. Um, uh, again, you get that blue color. Same thing with, with nitrates, pretty much. Um, how you treat them, though, is a little bit differently. With phosphates, we know there's a chemical that, that takes care and removes phosphates. We know this. It's lanthanum chloride. That's the chemical name for it. But you've probably seen it in, in stores, phosphory, phosbegone, anything phos, negative word. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's pretty much, and they're all the same product. It's all lanthanum chloride. And you add that to the water. It eliminates the phosphates. Really easy, really simple. Um, it's it, lanthanum chloride is is a, is a chloride. Remember we talked about that before. Um, it's not going to kill you or hurt you or anything like that. Uh, and there are certain steps you need to follow, like keep the pH in a certain range and things like that. But it's a really simple, relatively inexpensive product. And a lot of people nowadays have to use um, they, these products as maintenance products because they have phosphates in the water for some reason. Who knows? A lot of, lot of the, the dairy farms, the agricultural areas that have crop dusting, things like that. Nitrates are a completely different animal. There's no chemical that you can add to nitrates to get rid of it. Okay, the gen, There's two schools of thought. 
and getting rid of nitrates. Uh, the first school of thought is drain the water and refill it back up with water that doesn't have nitrates. Duh, of course. Mm-hmm. The second school of thought is that you algae shock the water to 30 parts per million two or three times in a row. Okay, so you're adding a boatload of chlorine. Okay, um, and that process converts nitrates into harmless nitrites. The problem is I'm not really great about the chemistry behind that. Um, I've, I understand how it could work, but I've never seen it really work. Most of the time people drain the water, refill it back up fresh, that kind of deal. Um, phosphate testing is really inexpensive. I mean, we have a really inexpensive kit that's like maybe 27 28 bucks. It's a K1106 uh, color matching test. Um, uh, for nitrates, though, Nitrate testing is a little pricey. No, it's a lot pricey um, because some of the chemicals that you need to use are pretty nasty. Uh, the kit that we have is about 250 bucks, and it costs almost that much to ship it because the only way you can ship it is through motor freight. UPS won't take it. FedEx won't take it. Wow. And, yeah, so I, I, it's not that I discourage people because, you know, I like to work and I like to be employed. But, you know, I, I mentioned test strips. There are some nitrate test strips out there. I know AquaCheck makes a really good one. Those are the but, ones I have, yeah. Yeah, those are pricey too because of the nature of the beast. So it's not something you're going to buy every week, you know, that kind of thing. It, it's, I think it's like I heard somebody say he paid $60 for, 10, for a thing of 10 strips. Oh, it, actually, Mark gave those to me. Yeah, really? They're yeah. pretty expensive. Yeah, they're, they're really yeah, expensive. Yeah, that's why I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm so hesitant about giving them up. <laughs> yeah, don't. Oh, you want these? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a good price. No. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so the, the assumption is that if you have phosphates, you also have nitrates in the water, usually. Okay? But, again, uh, only if certain conditions come up do you really need to worry about it. The tests involved, there's no interferences involved with it. it there's nothing that affects the test it's pretty pretty straightforward so we're really knock on wood we're lucky about that yeah yeah and why would you be having to test for any one of those because i mean testing for phosphates and nitrates is mm-hmm. not something you do on a weekly no basis. it's not something you do on a weekly i would say if if perfect example you have your monsoon season here okay you know it's rained heavy for a certain amount of time and you know that runoff's going to get into the pool then that would be a really good time to test for phosphates around here uh, because it's going to be in, in the ground. It's going to be, if, if they're fertilized, uh, a heavily landscaped pool, high-end pool that has a lot of stuff around it, a lot of uh, pools that have overhang plants, uh, trees, palm trees, things like that. That's when I would test for it. Yeah. At a control gardener? At a control gardener, yes. <laughs> and, and, the worst, the pool. and the worst ones is when you come to service the pool and the landscaper is mowing the lawn and all the grass clippings are going in the pool. That's the worst case scenario. That's when you want to actually commit suicide. Uh, not suicide, but you want to kill the. <laughs> kill the just, give, just give them the net. Be like, yeah. here, get this out. I'm going to go take a lunch. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We've also seen some really cool um, landscapers out here that we get there and they're actually like netting the pool. I'm like, oh my God. Wow. That's, that's good. Yeah, hire that guy. <laughs> yeah. And they know how to use the blower, blower to actually yeah. blow the stuff off the top of the pool. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I've tried that. Doesn't. It's not very easy. <laughs> Um, I've heard a few mixed feelings on this, but when you add like phosphory or PR 10 K is what we use. Mm-hmm. But, um, if you add it to the water and it clouds up, does mm-hmm. that mean that there's phosphates in the water or is it, I mean, I've heard that that, you know, no, uh, what it means is, is it could be a lot, it could be part of the chemical process. And it's like when you add alkalinity, uh, uh, when you add bicarb to increase your alkalinity, sometimes the water will cloud up, but it eventually goes away. It's the same idea with these products yeah it might cloud up initially but then eventually it goes away yeah just so happens that there's a bunch of phosphates in that one yeah always <laughs> always a, oh by the way you know um so it is a food for algae right? absolutely yeah biological buffet absolutely yeah the only other thing i want to talk about is, is algicides okay so i don't how they work why you use them the, the 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 important thing to remember about about that is that there is a difference between an algicide and an algistat okay an algicide kills, like suicide. Okay? Mm-hmm. An algistat prevents. So most of these products do both. Some don't. So you have to really read the, the labeling appropriately. But algicides, when, when added as a maintenance product, 
will do just exactly that. It will kill any algae that comes in and and hopefully it's an algostat too and will prevent formation of new algae. Because remember with algicides, you want to get to the nucleus of the algae cell so that it can no longer replicate. So you're destroying its love life. Okay, that's pretty much it. That's how, that's how you'd kill algae, okay? An algostat will prevent the growth of any additional algae that may be potentially forming in the body of water. So um, algicides, a, a good product if algae blooms are chronic at, at a pool or two or four or hundreds, whatever. Um, how do you, you can test for algicides too. Um, we have a couple test kits that will do that. Um, but with algicides, it's one of those things, it's like, I really don't care how much is in there as long as there's something in there kind of deal doing the job. So having a test that will give me a number is nice, but I want to know it's there. You know, yeah. I want to make sure that, that, that it's, it, there's something in there that's doing the job it's, it's supposed to do. Yeah. And Again, uh, algae and chlorine work together very well. Obviously, uh, algae, algaecide and chlorine work together very well. So, you get that right, you know, good marriage of the two products. You, you've got a good situation. What's your opinion on copper versus silver? Copper is uh, copper and silver are two of nature's most perfect algaecides. Okay, that's how you describe them. Okay, um, I prefer copper. Because uh, um, silver algicides are, are very, very expensive, number one. And I think copper does a better job as an algicide than silver does. Silver has limited biocidal properties. Copper doesn't. I mean, it just, boom, it goes in there and kills it. Now, in some cases, you can't use copper or silver algicides. You have to use what's called a, a polyquat-based uh, algicide, non-foaming kind of algicide. Uh, and that's fine, too. Um, but, um, again, we have test kits that will test that. In what cases would you need to use that as opposed to copper and silver? If, if you already have copper in the water for some particular reason, okay, like if your source water is from a well and you're adding copper into copper and you have a pool that's heated and using a copper heating element and the water's out of balance, so it's leaching copper into the water, you've just created Copper City. And it turns purple? Copper can go green, teal, blue. Blue green, ocean green, ocean blue. You can go any combination like that. <laughs> Iron is obviously you know brown, red, red brown, Adobe kind of color, kind of thing. Yeah. Seeing um, all those colors. Thank you guys so much for listening. We truly appreciate you giving us your time and your ear. We know how important and valuable that is. So thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, you can reach us at poolchasers.info at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Our tag is Pool Chasers. If you guys could take a minute and go to Apple Podcasts to rate and review the podcast, we would truly appreciate it. See See you out out there, there, Pool Chasers. Chasers.